So we're going to look at uh, question one. Hartley tipped us here. Determine the amount of water of crystallization in hydrated sodium carbonate. Um, so hydrated sodium carbonate is just Na2CO3 with so many waters attached. Uh, come on. And what we're going to do in this experiment is work out that value of X. How many water molecules are attached to that sodium carbonate. So this is just... Uh, titration involving an acid and a carbonate and like one of the four reactions of acids that we need to know an acid and a carbonate gives you a salt water and carbon dioxide so when we're doing a titration this is deemed a weak base and a strong acid and a strong acid weak base titration involves the use of the indicator methyl orange um, so it goes from a yellow to cheap pink so a strong acid and a weak base and for sick years they'll know the color uh, change lies within the vertical part of the curve for methyl orange. So we use a standard solution, a solution whose concentration is accurately known, of HCl, and we titrate it against this washing soda solution, which is made up of sodium carbonate, and it's an unknown concentration. And it's yellow to peachy pink, so methyl orange is yellow in the base, and once we add in that one extra drop, once we get that equivalence point, goes to a peachy pink color and we see the color change easier on the white tie. So you have on a worksheet maybe 2014 question one and I think that no it's not teed up as first principles. And have we look no so there could be a good chance of it being up this year in first principles. So I'll do 2006 um, higher level question one. So you can look up examinations.ie I'll give a wee link below it. So in this calculation, I've already wrote down now TIPCON titration conclusion. And the figure that's not always nice is the one coming from your burette. Why the one in the conical flask, which came from a pipette, is generally around 20 or 25. Now we'll do this first principles. I don't need to look at the questions anymore. Once I see this big M, once I see a volume and molarity, I work with it. Now once you see that big M, that means moles per liter. So you've got to say that in uh, chemistry or say it in mass. So the first thing they'll ask you for is the number of moles of HCl. So when you see the big M, it means the number of moles in a liter. How do you say that in maths? 0 0.11 in. Let's divide. And we're using centimeters cubed, so one liter is 1,000 centimeters cubed. 0.11 over a thousand. Now that gives me per centimeters cubed, we have 26.05, so times it by that. And that'll be the same for all your titrations. You started off that way. So when you see the big M, moles per liter, how do you say in the maths over? So you get 0 0.0028. And you don't need to write them all down, but never delete this number in your calculator. Moles in 26.05 centimeters cubed of HCl. Let's cut off a wee bit. Let's see. Perfect. Now, once we know that this is the number of moles you would have seen in stoichiometry before, the ratio in which they react is one is to two. We've got the number of moles of HCl. To work out the number of moles of sodium carbonate, we just divide it by two. And that would be the next question. They'll give you these headings. Sometimes it can be more confusing the way they ask them. So the number of moles of any two CO3, they'll probably say per 25 centimeters cubed. Just divide that by two. 0 0.0028655 divide that by 2 and just never delete the number in your calculator you get 0 0.00143 moles and this is the crucial bit in how much in 25 centimeters cubed so we've got the number of moles per 25 centimeters cubed the next thing they'll ask you for it's concentration or the molarity. 
Fanny Food CEO. So. so how do we say in, like we did up here, 0.11 moles in a litre? How do we say that? We put it over. So how do we say in 25? We put it over again. In 25. And we want to get the molarity. Molarity means moles per litre. The big M. So we've got the number of moles in 25. To get the number of moles in a litre, times are by a thousand. So we're having to litre that, divided by 25, times by a thousand, and should get a bigger number now. So 0 0.05731 moles per litre. I'll put a big M also in carbonate. They probably will ask you then maybe the concentration in grams per litre. Even if they don't, you need to do this. Now, we're going to work out how much grams per litre there are of sodium carbonate in hydrated sodium carbonate, and then be able to take away this figure from the crystals to work out how much water is in these crystals. So we've got the number of moles per litre in this. To go to grams per litre, when you're leaving moles, you're multiplying. So the first thing you got to do is work out the relative molecular mass of this. 2 by 23 from your sodiums is 46. 1 by carbon, 3 oxygens. It's been, these are the mass numbers. And yeah, those are up. We get 106. So 0 0.05731, the moles part of the triangle, to go up to grams per litre, multiplied by the relative molecular mass. I'm getting a tight little space here, but I'll try and squeeze it all in. 6.075 grams per litre in A2CO3. Now you have to stop. You have to look back at the question. And in this question here, I know you'll not be able to read it, but it says 8.2 grams of the crystals was made up to 500. So 8.2 grams of the crystals was made up to 500. This is in a litre, so we know that there's 8.2 grams of these crystals, sodium carbonate and water in 500 mils, to compare like with like. So 8.2 grams Na2CO3 with so much water attached in 500, we want to get it up to a litre. You could simply multiply by 2, lovely. If you like, using what we used before in 500, over 500, times that by a thousand gives you 16.4 just double it, grams per litre of hydrated crystals so we've got these crystals imagine this we have 16.4 grams per litre of them 6.075 grams per litre of that is oh, Na2CO3 how would you work out how much of them crystals is made up of water? You simply take them away. So, still haven't deleted that number in my calculator. So I'll just go 16.4 minus the answer, 10.325 grams per liter H2O. Now, the last two more questions there. The last the percentage of water crystallization and the value of X. I'll do the percentage up here because it's easy and then we'll do the value of x down here because we bit more put three so we'll just say percentage up here and i still haven't looked at the questions what they've asked but i know it's always a standard set of ones for these so percentage water of crystallization just means how much of the crystals is made up of water so we've got this amount of water in this amount of crystals so 10.325 and 16.4 and to make anything percent times it by 100 or 100 over 1 you might have learned as well. So there's that answer, right about 16.4 and times it by 100, 62.958, 62.96% of water of crystallization.
and then the last one, comma VA, the value of X. It just means how much water crystals or water compounds are attached to this sodium carbonate crystal. So what I do is go back to moles. So work out the number of moles of H2O. So we've got the number of grams of it to go back to moles unified by the relative molecular mass. And the relative molecular mass is 2 times 1 is 2, and then by 16 is 16, add that up to 18. So 10.325. Zero point five seven three six, and then work out the number of moles NO two zero three. Should have left a wee bit of room there, but uh, how many grams of this? Six point zero seven five. This is like in your stoichiometry, working out the empirical formula. Um, you worked out the percentages in each and then divided by the smallest to get the whole number ratio. Divide that by 106 and when you throw that in your calculator you get 0 0.05731 and you that it was just up here but throw it in your calculator and then divide by the smallest smallest whole number ratio you're not going to write Na2CO3 um, 0 0.05731 dot 0 0.5736 H2O. So just divide by the smallest. Pop that there, that's one. And 10. Which looks nice. So your value of X is 10. So the formula now is dot 10 H2O.